AI. Arc is a version control system meant for game projects, which means that it has to be able to handle binary assets. The problem with binary assets is that they can't be merged, so you need a feature called locking, which gives permission to only one user at a time to commit the file. If you're familiar with Perforce, you know this feature as exclusive checkout. However, their implementation has multiple problems, because when using Perforce, you actually have two versions of truth, the file system version and the Perforce one. The first problem is that all files need to be marked as read-only, enforcing this behavior on your file system. By imposing this, each time you want to change a file, you need to request exclusive checkout of that file. When you get it, the file will lose read-only flag and you can make changes on it. Once you're done with the changes, you can commit and the file will be available for anybody else to use. The second problem stems from the first. Since you need to check out files, you are usually stuck with using plugins in every application, as checking out files manually in Perforce is simply not convenient. And unfortunately, a lot of these plugins, including the official one for Visual Studio, will make your editor experience much worse, making it more sluggish and prone to errors when the plugin fails. But the worst is the third problem. Quite often when working on a game, you'll get into the situation where somebody else has the file checked out, but you need to get it purely to try something out or to debug an issue, even without intentions of committing it. So now you need to get around the read-only flag on the file, so you make the file writable so that you can make your local changes. The problem is that this now created a disconnect. Perforce will assume you don't have any local changes, you won't even be able to see them unless you go looking for them. Perforce gives you a tool to get around this issue, called Reconcile Offline Work. But if you ever used it, you'll know how painful that is, since using it in the whole project will make your Perforce unusable potentially for an hour, and in the end you'll be greeted with a huge list of other files it found that didn't match any of the ignore rules, making the whole feature useless unless you know exactly where to look. Arc wants to improve this workflow, trying to get out of your way while still ensuring that there is no loss of work. Its solution to this process is something I like to call soft locking, because it doesn't force your files to be read-only. Let me show you how it works. Here we have two clients working on the same Unreal project. Arc has a special file where you define rules for files that should automatically request locks when changed. In the case of an Unreal project, we have a rule for files with the U asset extension. Whenever such file is changed, Arc will request a lock for it. When you have lock ownership on a file, you'll see a closed lock icon next to it. This means that only this user has permission to commit this file. However, just because someone has the lock ownership doesn't mean that you can't request a lock. Let's assume that Natalia wants to work on this asset and before she even starts, she wants to make sure that she has the lock ownership. You can explicitly request a lock by right-clicking and choosing lock. Notice how before you do it, in front of the file, there's an open lock, representing that somebody else has lock ownership. After you ask for the lock, you'll now see an icon of a closed lock with a clock. This means that you're now waiting on a queue of lock requesters. Whenever Nunu unlocks the file, the lock ownership will be passed to the first person in the queue, in this case Natalia. Once Natalia receives the lock, she'll get a notification. However, let's assume that something urgent came about, and now Nunu needs the asset back. After he requests the lock, he'll have another option called Request Lock Ownership. This will send the notification to Natalia. She can now choose to give it or not, and whenever she makes a decision, a notification will be sent back to Noon informing him. By having this approach, you can work with Arc without requiring any plugins. That being said, there are cases where plugins are helpful, like in Unreal Editor to show you that you have outdated assets, be able to lock files without leaving the editor, or allow you to revert files that Unreal Editor has opened. This covers the topic of locking files in Arc. In the future, this concept will continue to evolve with extra options like force taking lock ownership by users with certain permissions. You can try out Arc by going to arc-vcs.com. If you like what you see, please consider supporting its development by pre-ordering it. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you on the next one.